Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray that all is well with you, brothers and sisters in Christ, that you're staying in the Word, you're staying in prayer, you're looking for that blessed hope, being a living witness and a verbal witness for Jesus Christ. But let's get this started. I want to sing a quick hymn. I want to say something that's, that's on my heart about the Word of God, and then get into some things that a gift to the ministry and everything. So, if you know the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, sometimes it's called When Peace Like a River. Okay. You can pause and try to look up the words and sing along if you'd like. But it says, When peace like a river attendeth my way, When sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, Though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well, with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well, with my soul. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. O Lord, haste the day when my face shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resign sound and the Lord shall appear. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. You say, brother, why are you singing this one? Brother says, Christ, I see what's going on out there. I do. I see the hardship that a brethren are going through. Their struggles with the flesh their struggles with the world and what's going on in the world, their struggle to not be distracted by what's going on in the world, the attacks from the enemy, Satan, that tries to get us to turn on this book, on God's perfect written word. And if you read through this song, get us to turn on salvation, true biblical salvation, to get us to turn on looking present tense for that blessed hope with the life that you're living. Not only believing that the body of Christ goes up before the time of Jacob's trouble, the day of Christ, the day of redemption, that blessed hope, but living for it. The world's always against us. The enemy, Satan, and them are always against us. I want to sing that song to you, Brother Sister Christ, to encourage you that no matter what, if you're starting to fall apart, get back to the Word of God. If you're starting to give it, start getting tempted hardcore by the flesh, get back into the Word of God in prayer. Get back into good fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. The world starts coming in. Get back into the Word of to try to distract you, to get you down. Get back into the Word of God in prayer and get it back into good fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. 
sing some hymns. Sing some hymns. Uh, in the King James Bible, go ahead and turn to Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. We're going to read uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. Okay. I put out a little challenge, Brother Sis Christ, for the brethren. This wasn't for lost people, but lost people got a hold of the video and started going crazy. Because I put out a challenge that we need to... We've been so indoctrinated today, in these last days, with the yea hath God said. I call it the yea hath God said disease, but the Bible says that you're spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. We start getting to, I can say it better, or I like this way of saying it, and you start trying to get this book to conform to you instead of you conforming to this book. I am the clay, Jesus is the potter. But today we're being pushed and torn by the flesh, by the world, by the enemies, to start making this book conform to us. And we can say whatever we want and just say, thus saith the Lord, without having any proof to back it up. And one of the challenges I get is people keep saying, free grace, free grace. And the challenge wasn't that I, I believe you have to earn salvation. I don't. I don't. I don't teach works at all to earn salvation. But the challenge was, is why can't you say it God's way? How does God say it? Does God say free grace? Does he say faith alone? Does he say easy believism? Easy believism is just a repentless gospel, but does he say these things in the Bible? No. The challenge was to say things God's way, and they got really bent out of shape. I think they spent three to four hours, you know, just gossiping. They would say, you can't argue free grace. A Bible believer can. I'm going to be a Berean and just say, chapter and verse, where it says free grace. And the, the bad habit, brothers and Christ, is I believe, and we're going to get into this, that God's saving grace is a gift, and that gift is free. But why won't they say it God's way? Let's read this. Verse 8. For by grace are you saved. And we always push this, brothers and Christ. It's grace that saves you. I believe, according to the Bible, repentance towards God. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. This is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. Neither cometh they to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. All right. Give me a second. Hold your finger there. When I read this earlier today, I left some things out because I need to say it right. All right. It talks, uh, and this is verse 19. It's John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. But the sorrows of the world worketh death. They love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. That's why they take repentance out. They hate the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. And I've said this before, when you put on the armor of light, that light should shine through you. You're supposed to be holy, sanctification. You're supposed to be living a clean and, and godly life according to this book. Now that you belong to Jesus Christ, he bought you. The Bible says... Uh, you're not, you know that you're not your own, you're bought with a price. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is uh, acceptable, and it's holy and acceptable, I think, and it's your reasonable service. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought, they who, are, who belong to God, are wrought in God, that they belong to God. Okay. For by grace are you saved. And like I said, repentance is part of it. I believe you have to repent. You have to believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Uh, I'm trying to go from memory. I'm very tired. Forgive me, brothers and Christ. I'm tired today. Um, Second, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, talks about how Christ died for our sins. Repentance. Not how Christ died and was buried and rose again. How he died for our sins. There's repentance again. 
But you learn that Jesus Christ is God the Father manifest in the flesh. It's God's blood that was shed on Calvary, and God's blood can wash your sins away. And when Jesus said it is finished, it is finished. There's no other way. The Bible says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. It's always a heart issue, not a head issue. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You have to confess both your repentance and your faith, your belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It takes faith to do both. And to God, to God in prayer, which takes faith to pray to somebody that, you know, you have to believe He exists to pray to Him. And then you have to, it says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You ask God to save you. Now, the reason I'm going through this again is because I want to make a good point here, brothers and Christ. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Repentance doesn't save you. But if you never repent, you'll never get saved. Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ does not save you. But if you don't come to the cross broken, throwing your iniquities at the foot of the cross, throwing the old man at the foot of the cross, the Bible talks about throwing... Uh, the old man is dead and buried, the new man... If you don't come to the cross, throw in the old man, repentance, and believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, you'll never get saved. But that doesn't save you. Confessing both in prayer doesn't save you. But if you don't go to God in prayer, humble yourself and go to God in prayer, the Bible talks about at the end of, um, but the heart man believeth in the righteous, but the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The next verse talks about not being ashamed. You're proving that you're not ashamed. And because God tells you, you have to do it. But it doesn't save you. When you sit there and go, Lord, please save me. I'm on my way to hell. I deserve to go to hell for sinning against you, Lord. I'm so sorry I ever sinned against you, Lord. I believe in your Son. I believe it's God's blood that was shed on the cross, how He died and rose again the third day, proving that He's God, manifest in the flesh, fully and completely. Lord, please save me. I don't deserve it, Lord. Please save me. Well, even when you ask Him to save you, that doesn't save you. But if you never ask Him, you'll never get saved. And that's the thing, I have a problem with a lot of this easy, what's called easy believism, free grace, faith alone people, they take repentance out. They'll never get saved. They're, they don't have true faith, they have the knowledge of Jesus Christ, of who He is and what He did, but they don't have the faith or the belief. Now Paul does say you can believe in vain, so maybe when I say head belief, head, I mean, I'm talking about head knowledge, I'm talking about it's up here, it's not down here. Now they're taking prayer out. Well, prayer is a work. Now they're taking prayer out. If you don't follow the steps that God set up, you'll never get saved. And you're like, well, well, how do you get saved? God does. Uh, the point is, God does the saving. For by grace are ye saved. It's God that does the saving. God looks at you and looks at the heart. Did you do everything that God said you were supposed to? Repent, believe, confess both in prayer, and ask God to save you? That's the whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Did you come to God with the proper heart? It says it happens here. Repentance happens here. Belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ happens here. Jesus in his earthly ministry was always looking at the men's heart. He could always see right through to the heart. The Bible says this: his word is a double-edged sword. It cuts right to the heart. It's a heart issue. God looks at the heart, and if, you're, if you did things God's way, and you're genuine, you're true, He will save you. He wants to save you. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God does not, I think it says, God doesn't delight in the destruction of the wicked. Might have got that a little off, but I remember there's a verse talking about how God doesn't delight in the destruction of the wicked. For by grace are ye saved. What saves us? God does. God saves us by His grace. His sacrifice on the cross. He, he does the saving. He did the work. He, I'm getting ahead of myself. He does the saving. For by grace are ye saved. 
Why can't they say that? Why can't they just say, we're saved by God's grace? It says, through faith. You're justified by faith. The just shall live by faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is God, you know, and he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Through faith. Why can't they say you're saved by God's grace through faith? Why do they have to say faith alone? Now, when you get when we call them out on it, faith alone. Then they start saying faith alone, or grace alone, by faith alone. They're still throwing their works in there. I'm going to get to this. For by grace are you saved through faith. And it says, and not of yourselves. When they start saying faith alone, they'll say, I'm a liar. I'm going off what they, the Bible says. Not of yourselves. Faith. Is faith something that God does? Or is faith something that we do? What does God do? For by grace are you saved. What did God do? He saved us by His grace. He sacrificed His Son on the cross. That's what God did. Faith is what we do. And when you say faith alone, you just made it of yourselves. And not of yourselves. Well, evidently we're going to ignore that part. And we're going to make it of ourselves. It's something I did that saved me. No, no, no. It says you find that grace through faith, but it's God's grace that saves it is a gift of God. No, free grace. Free. No, it's a gift of God. And I've said this before. A gift has to be given. And that's what they don't like. In this case, we just talked about it. Gift has to be asked for. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. A gift has to be asked for. In this case, not always. Because the gift I got here, I didn't ask for it. But when it comes to salvation, you have to ask for it. And a gift has to be given. This was given to me. I didn't take it. I didn't steal it. We're going to talk about some of the gifts that I was given to the ministry. I didn't steal it. It was given to me. A gift has to be given. In this case, a gift has to be asked for. And you know the other thing about a gift? It always costs somebody something. And my, this right here, it's like, it's free to me. I didn't pay for this stuff. But it costs somebody something. And that's what these easy believism, free grace, faith alone crowd can't handle. They take repentance out. Now they're taking prayer out. They don't even ask for it. They just take it. They're not actually taking it. They're false converts. This says, not of yourselves. And what they do is they make it of themselves. They always got to make it about themselves. Remember the Pharisee and the Sadducee, uh, not Sadducee, Pharisee and the publican. He started going through works. Next one says, it's, it's, it's not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works. You know, they always try to make this extreme. Prayer is a work, so talking is a work. Did, is breathing a work? Did you breathe when you believed? Oh, you're a false convert. Did you blink your eyes when you believed? Oh, you're a false convert. Were you walking when you believed? That's works. Oh, you're a false convert. You say, oh, you're, you're being really say overly, overly sarcastic. I am. I am. And, and for a reason. When it says not of works, it's talking about the circumcision and keeping the laws of Moses, the Ten Commandments. That's the works here it's talking about. When you saw, when you read, if you, if, if you can pause and go look for it, about the Pharisee and the publican, he stands up there and says, I'm not like other men are, and he starts going through the, like the Ten Commandments. Then he starts going through the Levitical laws and ordinances. This is what I do, and this is what I do. I, I tithe, and I, I fast twice in the week. I tithe of all I have, and he starts going through these different things that they would do in the Old Testament when it came to the Levitical laws. And, you know, you had to pay for the priesthood and the temple and everything. And you'd fast for certain reasons. He's going off of the Levitical laws. You know, we're under this, when you're lost, you're under the law of sin and death. And if you refuse to go through Jesus Christ, guess what you have to go through? You have to go through the Levitical laws. I should put it all here in the back. In the Old Testament, you have to go through the circumcision and the laws of Moses. 
the Ten Commandments, the Levitical Laws. That's what you have to go through, and you have to be perfect. That's the works it's talking about here, not of works, lest any man should boast. Prayer is not a work. Repentance isn't a work. Don't fall for that lie, okay? Not of works, lest any man should boast. After, and the other reason why they don't want, they want to make it faith alone and make it look like they've earned it by something they're doing. Remember it said, not of yourselves. They try to make it of themselves. Faith alone, faith alone. They make it of themselves that they've earned it. They can just take it. And therefore, they don't have to have a changed life. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship. Who's the we? Those who got saved by God's grace. You follow the proper steps, the through faith. You, pro you follow the, the plan of God, the true plan of salvation. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. For we, that's who the we are, Bible-believing, God-fearing men, brothers and sisters in Christ, part of the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, saints. The Bible uses the word Christian, someone who's in Christ. Okay. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works that change life. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That we should walk in them. All right. Turn with me to Romans. Now, here's the thing. That, I didn't say free gift. It just said gift. But we need to say things the Bible way. I'm not saying that it's not a gift and that that gift isn't free. Does the Bible say the gift is free? Turn to Romans 5. Turn to Romans 5. My whole challenge, Brother Sis Christ, and like I said, it falls on deaf ears. When I challenge a Brother Sis Christ that when you try to make it a salvation issue, like the gospel, you try to make it a salvation issue, you try to say this is a fundamental of the faith, this is, you know, thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures say, the Word of God complete, clearly states, it better be in here. And you need to say it God's way. And we need to start making ourselves, our vocabulary, when we say, thus saith the Lord. Not just our worldly stuff. I can say camera, I can say computer, I can say trinity, I can say free grace, I can say this stuff when it comes to worldliness, because I'm against that stuff, but when you start saying, the Bible teaches free grace, chapter and verse where it says free grace. The Bible teaches the Trinity, chapter and verse where capital T Trinity is a title for God, or lowercase t Trinity is a description of God. We worship a triune God, chapter and verse on this stuff. That's all I'm saying. We need to say it God's way. Free grace is not the right way to say it. What's the right way to say it? Romans 5. Turn to Romans 5, 15. Romans 5, 15. And I'm telling you right now, when I've done all my studies, Brothers of Christ, on all these different sayings, church age, rapture, trinity, uh, second advent, and this and that, all these worldly ph philosophical sayings that aren't in the Bible, when you actually do a solid study with the, the heartfelt, the Holy Spirit, and saying, I love this book and I want it God's way, they're all said in a way to attack the way God said it. To go against the way God said it. And they try to tell you the deception. And they're the same. They're the same. God had trained. They're the same. No, they're not. And I'll tell you this. Even if you believe they are the same, a true Bible believer will say, I don't care if, I, if I'm almost believing they're the same. I need to say it the way God said it. Especially if it's a title for God. If God said Godhead, I need to say Godhead. Not the world's way, Trinity. I need to say things God's way. Now, they're not the same thing, but that's one of their arguments is they're the same thing. I'd hit them back and say, A, they're not the same thing, but B, why do you have the hardest time saying it God's way? I had to work on this, brother says Christ. I had to get my heart right with the Lord. I had to break that indoctrination of yea, hath God said. Um... Romans 5, 15. You can read the whole chapter. The whole chapter is good. But 5, 15 says, But not as the offense, so also as the free gift. It's talking about Adam. 
Through one man sin entered into the world, through another man we get saved, the second Adam, Jesus Christ. But not as the offense, so also as the free gift. There it is, free gift. For if though, through the offense of one many be dead, Adam, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, not faith, grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded to many. It's what Jesus Christ did on the cross. It's what God the Father did, sacrificing His Son, His flesh, His body. The blood that was shed on the cross is God the Father's blood. Feed the church of God, which He had purchased with His own blood. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Now, it says through faith. Now understand, in my studies, I'm learning what justification means. You know what justification means? Did you do it the right way? Did you find God's grace the right way? And I'm learning that there's three ways to find God's grace throughout the whole Bible. You're either justified by faith, and there's works on the side to justify that faith. Or you're justified by works with faith on the side to keep you motivated to obey those works, to obey the commands of God. In the time of Jacob's trouble, it's don't take the mark, don't worship the beast. And your faith is what motivates you not to do that. But if you do that, you're justified by works. Your faith means nothing if you, do, if, you, if you go against the commandments of God. In James, it uses Abraham as an example of being justified by works. Paul, and I think it's Romans, talks about how um, we're just, today we're justified by faith. And there's works on the side that back up our faith, that prove our faith. But it's not the works that justify us. Those came after salvation. We're created in Christ Jesus under good works. That comes after God saves you. And it proves your faith. But we're justified by faith. And he talks about how Abraham was justified by faith. Wait a second. So what is that saying? The third way that you're justified in the Bible is faith and works. And you go through the whole Bible. I'm starting to learn, and you can, you can agree with me or disagree with me on this. This is something I'm still studying, still working out. I think in every dispensation there's faith and works. In every dispensation. You say, what about Adam and Eve? They had to believe God when God said, if you touch, if you eat that tree, I almost said touch like he did, if you eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt surely die. They had to believe him. There had to be some amount of faith there. They had to believe that he what he said was true. But what were they justified by? Works. There's faith always. There's always faith. There's always works. There's always both. But what are you justified by? Today it's by faith. Through faith, justified by faith. The just shall live by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Works come after salvation, and they're guaranteed for someone who truly got saved and born again. Works come after God saves you. Okay. Verse 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. There it is, the gift of righteousness. Jesus' righteousness is imputed to us. Verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Eternal life. I just, I'm sorry, Brother Scott, I just wanted to hit that because God, I'm to, I've got a gift, and we're going to be talking about gifts to the ministry, and I was like, well, salvation is a gift. It is. It's a free gift. I didn't earn it. Honestly, right now, I still don't deserve it. I can't... I remember, I think it was John Wesley was talking about before he truly got saved and born again, he was always trying to be worthy of God's grace. He was trying to merit salvation with his works. But he never came to God broken at the beginning. Okay? Even right now, I don't deserve salvation. It's still a gift. And you know that gift of salvation that God gave me? He had to give it to me. I had to ask for it, and He gave it to me. My salvation is based off God's grace, 
and what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross. Not what I did. And these people, I just I got thought these people be careful, brothers says Christ, do not get suckered into the yea hath God said, a better rendering would be. The indoctrination. Okay? You can be as God's knowing good. You can be as God. You can say it your way. You can improve on God's word. You can say it better than God can. No, I believe it's a free gift. But God said it's a free gift. He doesn't say free grace. Okay? A free gift. The gift is free. But the gift still costs somebody something. In the case that we're talking about, it costs God the Father, His Son, on the cross. Sacrificing His Son on Calvary. That's the cost of this gift. I've said this before, Brother Christ, when you truly biblically repent, godly sorrow, sorrow towards God, godly sorrow, sorrow towards God, for what? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? The wages of sin is death. That sorrow for your sins, and when you go to the cross and you look at what Jesus Christ did in your place, that sorrow gets magnified. What God did to save you. God's grace. And the world today doesn't want true biblical salvation. They want the easy believism. They want the repentantless gospel. They want where they can earn it some way. It's of themselves. It might not, I'm not saying, I used to say faith, they turn faith into works. Well, more than anything, what they're doing is, is I need to correct myself. It's not that they're turning faith into works. What they're doing is they're still making it of themselves, though. That's why it separates the two. Not of works and not of yourselves. It's two different things. It's not about keeping the Old Testament Levitical laws and ordinances and the Ten Commandments and whatnot. I got the Ten Commandments on the board. My brother and sister in Christ sent me that, which is amazing. It's not that. Okay. And it's not of yourselves. They're turning faith into something that you're doing that saves you. It doesn't. It's through faith. But remember, it's God that saves. Someone says, you're splitting hairs. You're splitting. No. Like I said, I came to God broken finally. I was part of the faith alone, easy believism, false gospel, false religion that the world loves. I saw a picture once that had two booths. And someone said, it's just a template and you can put anything you want in the banner above the booths. And one booth said, pray this prayer and you're in for easy prayerism. Uh, but I want to put up there faith alone on this booth and on this booth put up there repent and believe and it showed a huge crowd going up to the faith alone why no change life you don't have to repent you, you don't even have to pray if you don't want to it's just head belief and you can take salvation it doesn't have to be given you don't have to even ask for it just take it Brothers and Christ, when you t we know that when you take something without asking, what is that called? Stealing. Let's say it's a neighbor and you know your neighbor and everything. You go over there and you're going to ask him to borrow something, but he's not there. And you just take it anyway. That's called stealing. No matter how you try to sugarcoat it, it's still called stealing. Unless that neighbor said, it's okay for you to take that, you're stealing. Unless you ask him and he gives you permission, it's stealing. If you ask, if you take something without asking, it's stealing. Brothers and Christ, don't turn your back on this book. Don't turn your back on the truths in this book. The faith, the doctrines, the instruction righteousness, that blessed hope. you got brethren turning their back on the blessed hope now with the life they're living. Oh yeah, I still believe we go up before the time of Jacob's trouble. But are you looking for it with the life you're living? No, they're not. They stop looking for it, and they're getting distracted by the world, by lusts of the flesh, by the world. I just don't want that attack me, because I've heard people try to say that, oh, he, he, he doesn't believe it's, it's free grace, he doesn't believe it's a gift. No, I believe it's a gift. I believe it's a free gift. But I'm going to say it's a free gift because the Bible says it's a free gift. The Bible never says free grace. Never says it. We need to say things God's way.
If it's free grace, then it didn't cost anybody anything, and you can just take it whenever you want it. But if it's a free gift, it costs somebody something, and this in this situation you have to ask for it. And that's what they don't like. They don't like it. They don't like doing things God's way. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. Now the gifts to the ministry. <laughs> the brothers, the brethren in, uh, in Belgium, they sent me this with a picture of, I'll do a close-up, but a picture of Victoria, me holding Victoria in a video out on the deck. And on the back here they said, thank you for sending the beautiful King James Bibles to us and our family as a token of our gratitude. We would like to gift you this beautiful photo of you and Victoria made on the slate for both of us, from both of us. Okay. And the Pro Proverbs, 30, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 they put on here, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. We got a long study for um, Acknowledge Him in All Thy Ways, Aaron, Part 2. Okay, the instigator. Because there's a lot of instigators out there trying to pull us away from the Word, trying to cause division. Okay. But he, they gave me this a long time ago, which is great, and I, I appreciate it, but it's a gift. Now, before you say anything, I didn't earn it. I didn't give those Bibles to, to the brethren that want Bibles expecting something in return. No, I gave those Bibles because God blessed me with being able to give those Bibles. Okay. And brothers says Christ, you can give Bibles. One of the biggest things you can do with your abundance and money, like if you have anything that's extra, the Bible talks about those that are in a... Uh, those that are lacking versus those that are in abundance. I'll use the word abundance. I hope that's the right word. But, uh, but we, the, those of us that have been blessed that have more than we need, we can do things for the brethren. One of the things we can do is buy Bibles for them. Another thing we can do is buy gospel tracts for them. Another thing we can do is help them, if they're hurting for food and raiment, help them with food and raiment. Another thing you can do is if they have an unexpected bill that pops up. Don't get me wrong, if the Bible says, if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. If they're working hard, and they're hurting, and they're having hard times, help them. Help them. I still believe the number one way you can help anyone is putting this in their hands. That's the number one way. Man shall not live by bread alone, you know, food and raiment, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This is more important. Second would be food and raiment. Then, you know, helping them out here and there with stuff. But they gave me this, and then, if I can slide this over here, they gave me oops, another slab where we did our outdoor study, uh, are, you, are You a Christian in Christ? Where we talked about um, He's made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption. And the reason and the ultimate evidence that you have all four of those, that he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Not in what I did. Ah, faith alone, faith alone. No, you glory in the Lord. God, thank you for saving me. Even to this day, I still thank God often when I look at how wicked this world is, when I look at false religions, when I look at my old man where I used to be before I got saved, before God saved me. I thank God for saving me. And I don't regret ever getting saved, ever repenting and believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confessing both in prayer and asking God to save me. I never re regret the changed life God has given me. That study, if you haven't watched it, please go watch it. But they gave me a picture where I'm sitting there and I'm petting uh, Declan and he's jumping up in my lap and everything. So this is really nice. I'll put them places. Uh, Victoria's passed away. If, if you followed the ministry, you realize Victoria is my mentor schnauzer. Now I've got a full-size schnauzer, which is such a blessing from the Lord, because I was like, I don't think I can afford a schnauzer again. Um, I'll just see what the Lord has for me. And there was a group of, uh, there was a family, I was about to say a group, but a family down in California. And she came up from Crescent City to show Declan to me to say, hey, would you?" because a neighbor said, hey, would you like this dog? He's a schnauzer. I was like, he is? And I went and looked, and 
Now he's been uh, following me around ever since, and I've been following him around ever since. But this is a blessing, sister, brother and sister Christ. Thank you so much. I'll put this in certain places. They got me a uh, mug, and I, I'm not going to show it because, like I said, I'm not making merchandise of this. I remember the story of Jesus Christ who went into the temple and threw out the money changers and said, My Father's house is a house of prayer. I'm not going to turn the Word of God or the ministry into a money-making business. I know some of the brethren have been, have been tempted and they've gone the way of the world and they have. Uh, I'm, I'm not doing this, but they gave me a cup that actually says um, Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries on it. And it's a, it's a keep warm for tea or coffee. It's a little cup, and there's a picture of it right there. <laughs> I thought it's just, I'll try to use this, because I do tea during the winter. I'm just not a big coffee man at all, and I don't really do tea during the summer when it's hot, but during the winter, I love sitting outside, because I, I love being outside, getting away from this. If you don't understand my uh, testimony, when I was lost, I loved Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games. I was, I was addicted to porn. I was addicted to all these things. And I do everything I can to get away from the computers, the TVs, the internet. And I go outside and I love being outside. So during the winter it can be cold as can be. And I'll have a blanket. I have like two blankets wrapped around me. And I'll be sitting out there and I'll be drinking some hot tea, staying warm with hot tea. And I'll be enjoying the hillside. Doing, you know, God's taught me to stay in God's Word, listening to Alexander Scorvey. Praying, listening to beautiful, peaceful music wordless music, and I'll sit out there and I'll pray. And I love spending time with the Lord. So this is a gift. I thank the brethren so much for this. I'm going to be using that. Um, they sent me a lot of markers <laughs> for the marker board when we do our marker board studies. Okay. They sent me a lot of markers. So, thank you for those. Uh, I hope they last, because I don't do marker board studies that much, uh, but I do you know, do it sometimes, and sometimes my markers that I bought, I hardly used them, and because it's been so long that you used them, they tend to dry up sometimes without, like, from lack of use. So, I think it has to do with the first time you maybe take the lid off. I don't know. You guys can correct me in the, in the, in the comment section. They gave me pens, because I write a lot, putting together studies and everything. Thank you for the pens. Um, the highlighters for highlighting Bibles. Remember, Brother Jesus Christ, you can highlight them with highlighters. I did an old study, but we'll just talk about it again. You can highlight them with highlighters. Or what I found is now with technology, technology, there's these pencils, these color pencils you can get, and the, it's, the, the actual color part is soft as chalk. And this is what I usually use for highlighting, because I can put squares I can put a box and highlight the number and do multiple colors for one um, verse in the Bible. And I have a table of contents in the front of my book. This book right here. I started over with my big one over here because I just, when I first started I had very few table of contents. But now I started all over having a huge table of contents to go more in depth. Okay. I'm missing it somehow. There it is. There it is. I made a table of contents where I just wrote the, the color and said a salvation, a salvation, or you know, a false commerce where it's talking about false salvation versus true salvation. Everything I put everything in red. I was new. I know I need to separate it, so now I do red and brown in the new book. Uh, learning correction, judgment, you know, is yellow. Eternal security. Orange. You don't have to do the colors this way. I just show them what I did. Uh, the written word, I put silver because it's, the word of God is a silver tried in fire seven times. Thy words are pure words, therefore thy servant loveth it. Uh, key scriptures, I put in green when I was newly saved. There's all these key scriptures. I took that out of the old one because now all the scriptures are important. But there's scriptures you can start out with that are very important that you should get down first. Uh, the Godhead is green, and then the pre I put pre-time of Jacob's trouble. Today I'll put in day of Christ. Day of Christ, day of redemption, that blessed hope. But I found that these work, because sometimes these will bleed through. The paper isn't thick enough. And I like large print, so the larger print you go, the thinner the paper is, and this stuff tends, tends to bleed through. So I found these pencils. They're art pencils, and they're very soft pencils. 
So I think the word you're looking for is soft, but they feel really like chalk. They feel so soft. The actual, uh, what is it? The, like the lead and the pencil, but whatever lead they're using that's the color, it's very soft. I thank the brethren for these. I thank the brethren for these. Remember, these are gifts. I didn't earn this. I'm thankful for it, Brothers of Christ. Uh, this is the, Brothers of Christ, they sent me this, and I'm hoping this works really good, because I talked to them about going for walks out here, and in the mornings I saw a bear once, because we got up in the morning, and the, if the fog level, like lately the temperature hasn't gotten hot enough, so the fog, it's fog, but it's cloud. The cloud level rises up the, the, the hillside, and it'll still be dark in the morning, like at 7 in the morning. And you can see, but it's gray cloud covered and it's kind of dark and some of the bears don't go, go, to, go to their home to go to sleep. And I said I use this, it's long, it's big, um, it's an LED light and when I turn it on it's bright enough to really shine down. So if this works, it's half the size, it's easier to carry. <laughs> so this might help out and be a lot better and I'll leave this as an emergency one. I'm one of those people that I, I get one, it works. I, that's all I need. I just got the one. I'm happy, Lord. Thank you. I'm content. I got the one flashlight. I use this for everything, not just outside, but around the house when we lose power at night. Or during the winter, it gets dark at 6. So from 6 till probably 8 in the morning, if we lose power, which we have sometimes, I'll use this. Uh, there's another... I, I take it back. My brother bought me a little LED lamp. It actually looks like a lamp that you hold up, like the old-fashioned lamps, that you slide it out, it turns on. You slide it in, it turns off, but it looks like an old-fashioned lamp. But I thank you for this, Brother Jesus Christ. And it did come, everything so everything came, it was good condition. Everything's in great condition. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's a gift, and I'm grateful for it. Thank you. I'm going to keep pushing that it's a gift thing because of what we were talking about. It's a gift. Salvation is a gift. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. The gift was free. But I had to ask for it. And it cost somebody something. This cost somebody something. Now one of the things I really want to give hardcore to the brother, for, for the brother sister Christ sent this, they sent me these for my garden. And they sent gloves for the garden. Okay, I'm grateful for these gloves. I'll try them. Um, I do sometimes like, I, try, I sometimes try to skip the gloves and some of the dirt and stuff that I'm, I'm using has wood chips in it and I start getting splinters and I start regretting not wearing gloves but you need to wear gloves but these I'm so thankful for if you don't know what these are these are uh, hedge clippers little hedge clippers and I think what I do sometimes is I try to cut something too big and when you try to force something too big you lose the spring you lose the spring between here so now with this what I've been using this one is, this is what I've been doing and you're like well why don't you just buy another one I don't like wasting money if this is still here and I can still use it I'm gonna use it okay that's just the way God made me and that's the way I am so this is what I've been using when I need to use it then I've got the big stick ones for supposed to be for thicker branches but I think I used this on too big of branches and I lost the spring system between the spring system is supposed to keep it open and you, so every time you cut down, it, you don't have to pull it back open. I don't have to use two hands. You can use one hand to use it. This one you can't. i got to use both hands because it doesn't have the spring. And when you close it all the way with the spring system, you lock it into place, and that keeps it from opening. You guys know it. Some of the brethren know it. Some probably don't. But they bought me two of them. Okay. One would have been enough, brothers and sisters Christ. One would have been more than enough. I am grateful. But I'll, now I'll have a backup. So this will be sitting up there. I'll probably trade this one out for this one. And then wear this one to death and hope the spring system stays on there. And I, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this. But it's still not my favorite part of the gift, Brothers of Christ. My favorite part of the whole gift the brethren gave me is this guy right here. We'll do a close-up of it. But it's this guy right here. If you look, uh, I have a sand dollar here, the full size of the sand dollar, and then I found me a, a, a sand dollar that's like even smaller than a penny. A sand dollar that's smaller than a penny. But what they gave me, which was such a blessing, is they gave me a micro, it's a, I want to say micro Bible, but it's like a super small King James Bible. This is the King James Bible right here. <laughs> and I'll hold this up here. This is the sand dollar. But it's so small, I honestly cannot read it. 
but it came with a little circle magnifying glass. And you can hold the magnifying glass just right, not right against it. You have to pull it back a ways and it makes it get really big and you're like, got to be really close. And I love this. It's, it's the King James Bible all the way through, but it's so small and micro that you have to use this to read it. And I got to thinking, I don't think it'll ever get that way. I think we're going to get caught up first. Um, but if it ever gets to the point where the King James Bible gets outlawed, I was thinking, Lord, you know what? This is a lot easier to hide than this. <laughs> but both are the Word of God. Both are the Word of God. So this was a, a great, great blessing from the Lord. I really liked it. I spent uh, uh, some time looking through it. If we go through hard times, then... Oops. See if I can get it back on then this is easier to hide. <laughs> All right. Once again, thank you. Thank you, brothers and sisters of Christ. This, I love Bibles. I have a Bible collection. I've shared some of my Bible collection. I haven't really added to it that much because the bookstore that I used to go to, it used to be a huge used bookstore. From, and it was two-story. Bottom floor had books. Top floor had books. Now, the bottom, it's on bottom out and the bottom floor is all gallery. So it's like paintings and statues um, and jewelry art and stuff like that so their books got cut in half and there's books on top floor which I still stop by but they're not replacing with new books it just seems like the same books are there and I kind of miss that excitement of going there and looking to find something new and I found my favorite King James Bible in there I showed it in another video um, it's the one where the, the Bible, when you look at it, when it's closed, it looks gold. It's black. Seven seals on the side, it's black. It's gold. But when you open it up and they fan out with that look of being open, like when you take this and you open it up and it fans out and you see how it slides sideways, it goes from looking gold to now it all looks red. The gold disappears and it's all red. And it's just large print. And it's an old Bible. It's got that old page smell, like that old book smell, which I really like. It's really good. All right, making this quick because this, this video has gone a little bit longer than I wanted to. I apologize, Brothers of Christ. I know you guys got important things to do. You really do. Um, they sent me this book, and it's called Sealed by the King, 777, Crown of Thorns Around It. Intricate Patterns and Detailed Pointing to God's Inspiration Over the 1611 Holy Bible in English by Brandon Peterson. Now, I, I saw a book over here I haven't read because the number one book I'm going through every day is this book. And trying to put together Bible studies and trying to pray over the Bible studies and pray for the brethren. The Lord has blessed me with more and more brethren to fellowship with and do Bible studies, so I'm doing Bible studies with them and in fellowship and everything. So I really don't get to books because, I, like I said, I still have some books on the shelf there I haven't read yet. Now I flipped through here and saw some things on it and some of it was like, oh, that's interesting. And some of it was like, oh, come on, you're stretching. But the, 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 here's my thing that I'll take on it right now to help the Brothers of Christ in Belgium and anybody else. When it comes to, the, they say numerology, numerology and stuff like that. Look how thick this book is. Okay. They spent way too much time on this when they need to be spending more time actually doing this. Reading, studying, Bible studies, okay, memorization, and less time in this. Peter Ruckman, I got Peter Ruckman's book, and I made it through this book a long time ago. Um, it's called Bible Numerics. Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, do, uh, does the, the Bible have numbers in it? You know, we always talk about how six is the number of man, and it's the number of the beast. Six, three, score, and six. Six, six, six. Six is the number of man. Seven is the number of completion. Eight is new beginnings and so on and so forth. Um, because there's a lot to it in the Bible. But my point I'm trying to make, just for this, if I ever get around to it, I will. There's, there's, I still haven't read, there's a book over there called, uh, I think it's Jesse Carr, Saints in the Wilderness. I still haven't even got to that book yet. Still haven't. I want to. That's one of the books that's on my list. Right now I'm trying to get through and it's been setting on my nights down for like several months. Probably even six months is I got Sam, Sam Gipps answer book, the first one I loved. I didn't know he put out a second and third one, so now I'm trying to get through the third one finally. <laughs> and that's one of the, the chain of books that I'm trying to get through right now. 
But this is all the time that should be taken up on it when it comes to numbers in the Bible. This is someone who's got a lot of time on their hands and they probably should spend it more in this <laughs> than talking about this. I know they're talking about this and they're trying to do 777 and here's 777 here, here's 7 here, here's this here. It's just, you know, Jesus plus Christ appears 777 times plus 777 times and this and that. And I'm not downing this. I'm not saying it's, it's evil or wicked. I'm just saying this is someone that has a lot of time on their hands. This is all I needed, and this is all brethren need. If you want to, uh, Dr. P Dr. Peter S. Ruckman, the Bible Baptist Bookstore, uh, Bible Numerics. Now, some of the some, some of the things he goes over here, I'm like, eh, maybe. Most of it sounds right. It really does. And some of it's like, eh, okay, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying no, but I'm not, you know, 100% sold yet, you know. But this is about all you need to go through something like this and go, okay, it gives me a little bit of an idea as I'm reading this book and you stay mostly in the book reading Brother Sis Christ. So if I get around to it, I will get around to it, but no, I, I'm not making any vows and I'm not making any promises because, like I said, in these last days, I'm, I'm spending most of my time in this. This book, physically reading it or listening to Alexander Scorby go through the Old Testament and I'm trying to keep the Word of God fresh in my heart because if you see me stop, I've got to think hard. I have a hard time memorizing scripture. And I have a hard time remembering stories precisely. And I make some mistakes. And some of the brethren correct me. And thank you for the correction. I want to be lined up with this book. And I want to make sure I'm doing, the, doing what's right by the word of God. So this is where I spend all my time. And to, to end this video real quick, I spend all my time in this. Because Brother Sister Christ, I've learned from experience that when I put this down and started resurrecting the old man, started getting back into addictions, um, getting into lust of the flesh, or getting distracted by the world and getting into worldliness, when I put this down, I started forgetting things. I had a hard time quoting scriptures that I, I had memorized. And that's maybe it's just me, because some men have, might have great memories, but I had a seizure disorder, and, you know... The brain, it's, I've always had a hard time retaining things and, and memorizing things. And the only way I'm going to be able to you know, stay, be, stay true to this book and faithful to this book is to keep hiding it in my heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path i got to stay in this book to keep me away from the lust of the flesh and being distracted from the world, but to help me keep retaining this. So, like I said, I'm thankful for this. I'll put it on, I'll put it over there. I'm looking. <laughs> there's actually several books over there I haven't got through. In fact, there's a few books over there from Chip Publications that are still in their wrapping. <laughs> I haven't got to them. I bought them saying, okay, it seems like it's, a, it's, a, it's something good, but it's not important. This is important, but it's something that, hey, he did the work. I, I, I want to try to go through it and, and see what he found and everything. I think one had to do with, uh, let's see if I can't read from here. I can't remember what one had to do with. Uh, one says, the priest, the woman, and the confessional. And there's some other things there. I just haven't gotten through them. So, Brothers of Christ that sent this, I'll try to get through it eventually. It's on there, you know. If things get bad, we get kicked off the internet, and I lose power, I'll be spending a lot more time reading. <laughs> I think we all will. We've kind of gotten too, in, too distracted by this sometimes, the computer and having screens, that we forget that we need to be spending a lot of time in this. And I've been spending more time reading as well as listening to Alexander Scorby. But I thank you again, Brother Sis Christ, for all that you sent me. I really do. I appreciate it. Brother Sis Christ, remember there's a difference between it's a free gift and then it's flat out saying free grace. And the biggest difference is one's in the Bible, one isn't. That's what I've been trying to say. Faith alone and through faith. Well, it's faith alone, and then they'll read that verse, for by grace are you saved through faith. Through faith and faith alone are not the same thing. And the one big difference is, one's in the Bible, the other is not. That's the biggest difference. And for a Bible believer, that should be enough to say, I'm going to say it God's way. 
well, Godhead, uh, and then they read the verses about, I mean, Trinity, they'll say Trinity, and then they'll read the verses on the Godhead, and they'll read verses that even say Godhead and say, that's the Trinity. God and Trinity are not the same thing. The number one reason, one's in the Bible, the other is not. Brother, this is Christ. Remember, this is our final authority, not this, not the world, not the enemy, not philosophy. Remember, uh, spoiled by philosophy, not vain deceit. That's not the final authority. Uh, through the traditions of men. Traditions of men are not the final authority. Uh, rudiments of the world. We already said it. The world's not the authority. Not after Christ. Who's the authority? Jesus Christ. And he's given us a perfect written word, the King James Bible, in English. We need to follow it. We need to stand for it more. And I know I'm random, rambling on a little bit, but I'm trying to th remember if I wanted to say anything else. But this is Christ. We're going to get into a study here, and we're going to talk about how even Peter became an instigator. And you have people that think they're defending God when Peter, he just said, Jesus just asked Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, um, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then the next thing you know, he's rebuking Jesus when Jesus said, hey, I'm going to have to die and be, and, and be buried and rise at grace again the third day. And he rebuked Jesus. First, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. You're God manifest in the flesh. Your words are God's words. Now, next thing you know, he's correcting God Almighty manifest in the flesh. He's correcting this. Remember, it's the spoken word. It gets written down and becomes the written word. He's, he's, he's rebuking this. He's going against this. But in his heart, he thinks he's doing a good thing. I'm standing up for Jesus. I'm standing up for my master. I'm standing up for... You know, the Christ, the Son of the... I'm doing right. And he thinks he's doing right. And Jesus looks at him and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. For thou savest the things that be of men. Men's way of saying things. Men's way of doing things that's contrary to this book. And not after God. Right? Thou savest the things that be of men, and not the things that be of God. There's so many people that think, I'm defending this Bible. I'm defending it. I'm fighting for the Lord when they defend Trinity. They think they're fighting for the Lord when they defend free grace. They think they're fighting for the Lord when they defend faith alone, when they defend church age, when they defend rapture, when they defend second uh, advent, the term second advent, when they, uh, kingdom of heaven. I'm uh, not kingdom of heaven. That is in the Bible. I'm thinking millennial kingdom. When they're defending all these terms and words, and philosophy, and man's way of saying things, they're not fighting for this book, they're attacking this book. Through and through, they're attacking this book. But in their hearts, they think they're attacking this book. I'm here to exhort you, and correct you, brother, says Christ, saying, stop attacking this book, thinking you're defending it. Start actually defending the Word of God. Okay. So we'll end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Brother Sis Christ, for this gift. And Brother Sis Christ, get back into the Word of God. Get back into prayer. Get back into living for Jesus Christ. Being a living witness and a verbal witness. Putting on the whole armor of God. I'll see you in the next study.